Look at this. This is MAX-4, the most modern synchrotron radiation facility in the world. Over 2,000 international researchers will use this laboratory each year to conduct groundbreaking experiments in materials and life sciences using the most brilliant X-ray light ever generated. MAX-4 enables researchers to study atoms and molecules that are only a few tenths of a nanometer in diameter, which provides completely new knowledge about the world and how it works. I'm not going to talk more about technology. What I see as fascinating with MAX-4 is the management of the construction process of this facility. In the year of 2010, this was all farmland and six years later, the construction was finished to a cost of six billion Swedish crowns. As you may imagine, a number of different activities have taken place here at decided points in time. That is what I'm going to talk about here. I'm going to talk about project management. I am Marie Lövgren, and I am a senior lecturer at Stenke Johnson Center for Entrepreneurship at Lund University. I will take you through a very basic process of defining a project, setting the goal and requirements, project planning and how to handle different stakeholders. Let's start with a small quiz. Which of the following is a project? 1. Building a giant facility like the MAX-4. 2. Organizing a student carnival in Lund. 3 developing a new electronic car with an outstanding reach, or four, entering the Danish market with your business. Was it difficult? Yeah, you're right. All of them are projects. So what is not a project then? Something is not a project when it's part of your daily operations. Even if getting out of bed in the morning sometimes could feel like a project, strictly speaking, it is not, because it's something you do on a daily basis. A project should be specific and limited in time. It's a temporary coordinated effort where you use a spe specified set of resources to reach a determined goal, like the MAX-4. Basically, it's a method. It's a way to work efficiently towards a goal. Now, you could manage a lot of projects without knowing anything about project management. The purpose of organizing things as a project and using the available tools is to optimize the use of the existing resources. In other words, to be more efficient. And the more complex a project is, the more important it is to structure the process to be efficient. You would not be able to construct the MAX-4 without project management. But, how is project management relevant for entrepreneurs? Normally, there is a lot of smaller projects within the bigger picture of entrepreneurship. To get a venture up and running or to do anything entrepreneurial could be seen as a project in which you need to perform a number of activities. Like, for instance, create stakeholder interest, test the feasibility of your idea, maybe get production going, find good suppliers, etc. The use of project management as a method helps you work efficiently to reach each of these smaller goals that will bring you closer to the bigger vision. It may actually save you a lot of time and energy. So, how go about it then? Normally, you start with establishing what should be done, why, for whom, where and when. And of course, for what purpose. Having done that, you have the basic framework of the project. But when it comes to the purpose, you may have to think twice. Ask yourself what the advantages of doing this project are, for whom, and maybe compared to existing ones. What is the goal and what effects do you anticipate from it? You could get some help in setting a good goal for your project by using the SMART test. That is, test the goal by answering these questions. Is it specific? That is clearly formulated. Is it measurable? Can you measure the output in the end? Is it accepted by the stakeholders? Is it realistic? And is there a time frame for reaching the goal? If the answer is yes, 
to all of these questions, you have a clearly defined and workable goal for your project, which is also easy to understand and to communicate to your project team and other stakeholders. You may also want to consider the requirements of the project. In project management, we normally talk about a triangle that consists of three things that affect one another. It's time, it's resources and quality. These three need to balance and you need to prioritize. If you prioritize quality, you need a certain amount of resources and time to deliver. If you have few resources to put into the project, that will affect the time you can spend on it as well as the quality of the output. If you prioritize speed, that will affect the resources you can spend and the quality may be poorer. When you have defined the project, it may be useful to do a pre-study. In the pre-study, you look at the overall situation and try to figure out under which circumstances this project would be feasible or not. You analyze the project's environment, what are the current trends out there, rules and regulations that might apply, and the stakeholders involved. What are their interests in the project? From the analysis, you come up with the best possible solution in relation to the goal. You could do a profit analysis too, if relevant to your project. If you, during the pre-study, find some obstacles or difficulties, you may need to change the demands or even the final goal of the project if you want to continue. If this is the case, you will need to negotiate with the project owner. But when you've agreed on what is feasible, it is time to plan for the project in more detail. The most common and useful planning tool is the work breakdown structure or the WBS. The WBS is a hierarchy of the objective, the goals and the activities that need to be carried out in order to reach the goals. If we take the example of entering the Danish market as the objective, one goal could be to establish a sales office in Copenhagen. In order to establish this office, a number of different activities need to be performed, like finding a good place, signing a contract, recruiting staff, etc. And each of these activities could be split up into sub-activities, like in the case of recruiting staff, formulating an ad, selecting channels to post it, reviewing applicants, interview them, etc. So the activities become work packages with a number of tasks to perform. But how and in what order? Now we need time planning, a schedule to understand what activities to perform first, second, etc. Some activities may even be dependent on each other. You can't sign a contract before you found a good place, for instance. We need some sort of a flowchart. But before being able to make a chart, you need to decide on how long each activity may take and in what order they should be performed. Most project managers use a Gantt chart for time planning. Here you can put in all the activities to the left and the time at the top of a the chart. Then you just draw lines for the activities in the cells representing the time when you expect to perform the tasks. When you've got the chart all filled in, you should take a second look at it and consider if you've been too optimistic, if you've planned for delays and risks, if you've put too many activities at the same time, and if you've included all the tasks from the WBS. Now, if you did a pre-study, you have already thought about your potential stakeholders and their interests in the project. Now is the time to involve them or to inform them. You need a project team and there is a number of people outside of the project itself that in one way or another is affected by the development process. You need to manage these stakeholders. The core stakeholders are the members of your project team. As project manager, it is your job to see to it that the project delivers on time. This means that you need to control the progress of the project and make sure that it is moving in the right direction. Of course, there may be changes to the project. 
you may come across something unforeseen or gain additional information that need you to change something. Reasons for changes are often discovered at the team meetings. In project management, you often structure the process by putting toll gates in the Gantt chart. At the toll gates, the team should meet and evaluate the progress. Putting them in the Gantt chart makes it transparent for all members of the team when the next meeting takes place and what activities should have been performed until then. And of course, the meeting is an opportunity to decide on necessary changes. But you have more stakeholders to consider. There is the primary stakeholders, those who are particularly affected by the project. Though those who most likely would like to influence it. Examples are customers, contractors, owners, etc. You need to handle these people so they contribute more than disturb the project. Set up meetings with them, discuss with them, involve them. Then there is the secondary stakeholders. These are stakeholders with a relatively low interest in the project and they will probably not influence it if everything runs according to plan. Examples are the media or the general public. All of these stakeholders are not equally important and you should treat them accordingly. You have to decide on which are most important for the project and decide on how to communicate with the stakeholders. In complex projects like this one, for instance, you create a plan for how and when to communicate. Now, we have been through the most important parts of project management. The pre-study, the objective and goal, the planning of activities and time, and the stakeholders. You may find the project working method a bit strict, and that it leaves little room for improvisation or adjustment to opportunities that may come your way you may want to work a bit more agile. It is possible to work with more flexible methods and it may even be necessary if it is difficult to see what the final product would look like or if the requirements are not clear or if the situation is constantly changing. In agile projects, you usually plan one or two stages at a time, sometimes called sprints. Then you need to prioritize what is going to be included in each sprint, decide on who does what, deliver results at deadlines, follow up and evaluate, and then reprioritize and decide where to go next before starting the next sprint. It is an iterative process where you involve the stakeholders, not only the team members, to a greater extent during the entire project development process. The solution emerges gradually as the project moves forward. You get a much more flexible process and less risk since you follow up after each sprint. But the problem with agile methods is that you to some extent will lose control over the project. You may overspend the budget, you could extend the time frame. It has been found to be a better option to combine the two project methods, if possible. In other words, you should use the tools that fit your purpose and enjoy your projects.